Hey, I'm Ryan Lagarde. And I'm Craig Tovey. And welcome to Storytime with Ryan Lagarde and Craig Tovey. Today's book is... <gasps> the, the Day the, the Crayons Quit. Quit by Drew Daywalt and Oliver Jeffers. Let's get started. The, the Day the Crayons Quit by Drew Daywalt and Oliver Jeffers. One day in class, Duncan went to take out his crayons and found a stack of letters with his name on them. Ooh, what do you think's in those notes? It's probably the crayons saying that they quit. I think they're thank you cards. Do you remember the title of the book? Yeah, it was the day the crayons quit being ungrateful and started writing thank you notes. Okay. Hey Duncan, it's me, Red Crayon. We need to talk. You make me work harder than any of your other crayons. All year long, I wear myself out coloring fire engines, apples, strawberries, and everything else that's red. I even work on holidays. I have to color all the Santas at Christmas and all the hearts on Valentine's Day. I need a rest. Your overworked friend, Red Crayon. Ooh, looks like it's not a thank you letter. Ooh, you got me. But more importantly, it's raining hearts, apples, and strawberries. Ho, 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 there's a fire! Says Santa on a fire engine. I hope his presents are okay. <laughs> Dear Duncan, all right, listen. I love that I'm your favorite crayon for grapes, dragons, and wizards hats, but it makes me crazy that so much of my gorgeous color goes outside the lines. <laughs> if you don't start coloring inside the lines soon, I'm going to completely lose it. Your very neat friend, Purple Crayon. Dear Duncan, I'm tired of being called light brown or dark tan because I'm neither. I'm bish and I'm proud. I'm also tired of being second place to Mr. Brown Crayon. It's not fair that brown gets all the bears, ponies, and puppies, while the only things I get are turkey dinners, if I'm lucky, and wheat. And let's be honest, when was the last time you saw a kid excited about coloring wheat? Your beige friend, beige crayon. Oh, I never color wheat. Oh, why? I'm gluten free. Not how it works. Duncan, gray crayon here, you're killing me. I know you love elephants, and I know that elephants are gray, but that's a lot of space to color in all by myself. And don't even get me started on your rhinos, hippos, and humpback whales. You know how tired I am after handling one of those things? Such big animals. Baby penguins are gray, you know? <laughs> so are very tiny rocks, pebbles. How about one of those once in a while to give me a break? Your very tired friend, Gray Crayon. Dear Duncan, you color with me, but why? Most of the time, I'm the same color as the page you are using me on, white. If I didn't have a black outline, you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not even in the rainbow. I'm only used to color snow or to fill an empty space between the other things. And it leaves me feeling, well, empty. We need to talk. Your empty friend, White Crayon. White Cats in the Snow by Duncan. Hi, Duncan. I hate being used to draw the outline of things. Things that are colored in by other colors, all of which think they're brighter than me. It's not fair when you use me to draw a nice beach ball and then fill in the colors of the ball with all the other crayons. How about a black beach ball sometime? Is that too much to ask? Your friend, Black Crayon. There is a rainbow and some clouds way up there. We got a beach ball and we're throwing it in the air. Polka dot dress and shorts, that's what we wear. And we color them all black. I don't care. I love it. I don't care. I love it. I love it. Dear Duncan, as Green Crayon, I'm writing for two reasons. One is to say that I like my work, loads of crocodiles, trees, dinosaurs, and frogs. I have no problems and wish to congratulate you on a very successful coloring things green career so far. The second reason I write is for my friends Yellow Crayon and Orange Crayon who are no longer speaking to each other. Both crayons feel they should be the color of the sun 
please settle this soon because they're driving the rest of us crazy. <laughs> Your happy friend, Green Crayon. Dear Duncan, Yellow Crayon here. I need you to tell Orange Crayon that I am the color of the sun. I would tell him, but we are no longer speaking. And I can prove I'm the color of the sun too. Last Tuesday, you used me to color in the sun on your Happy Farm coloring book. In case you've forgotten, it's on page seven. You can't miss me. I'm shining down brilliantly on a field of yellow corn. Your pal in the true color of the sun, Yellow Crayon. Happy Farm. Dear Duncan, I see Yellow Crayon already talked to you, the big whiner. Anyway, could you please tell Mr. Tattletail that he is not the color of the sun? I would, but we're no longer speaking. We both know I am clearly the color of the sun because on Thursday, you used me to color the sun on both the Monkey Island and the Meet the Zookeeper pages in your Day at the Zoo coloring book. Orange, you glad I'm here? Ha! Your pal and the real color of the sun, Orange Cran. Meet the Zookeeper. Monkey Island. Oh, I've been to Monkey Island. You have? Yeah. We had to go to a parking lot and then you gave a guy a ticket and there was a souvenir shop and then my mom and I had lunch. Right, right. That's a zoo. You're describing a zoo. Oh yeah, what'd I say? Monkey Island. Oh no, you can't go to Monkey Island in the fall. Dear Duncan, it has been great being your favorite color this past year and the year before that and the year before that. I have really enjoyed all those oceans, lakes, rivers, raindrops, rain clouds, and clear skies. But the bad news is that I'm so short and stubby, I can't even see over the railing in the crayon box anymore. I need a break. Your very stubby friend, Blue Crayon. Duncan, okay, listen here, kid. You have not used me once in the past year. It's because you think I'm a girl's color, isn't it? Speaking of which, Please tell your little sister I said thank you for using me to color in her little princess coloring book. I think she did a fabulous job of staying inside the lines. Now, back to us. Could you please use me sometime to color the occasional pink dinosaur or monster or cowboy? Goodness knows, they could all use a splash of color. Your unused friend, Pink Crayon. Hey, Duncan, it's me, Peach Crayon. Why did you peel off my paper wrapping? Now I'm naked and too embarrassed to leave the crayon box. I don't even have any underwear. How would you like to go to school naked? I need some clothes. Help, your naked friend, Peach Crayon. When I was two, I lost all my clothes and my mom threw me in the water. Was it a bath? Yeah. Just say bath. Oh, <laughs> I had a bath when I was two. <laughs> Well, poor Duncan just wanted to color. And of course he wanted his crayons to be happy. And that gave him an idea. Ooh, I wonder what his idea is. I bet it was orange. No, it's pink. A, an idea. Banana. The purple dragon and the big pink dinosaur. But the elephant on the beach ball likes to juggle more. The pink princess in the airplane man, she can soar. And then the wizard rode the whale. I don't care, I love it, I don't care, I love it, I love it. When Duncan showed his teacher his new picture, she gave him an A for coloring. And an A plus for creativity. And a plane ticket to Monkey Island. You mean the zoo? Yeah, what'd I say? Monkey Island. No, it's terrible this time of year. Are you going? No. You keep bringing it up. I'm talking about Monkey Island. The zoo. That's what I said. <laughs> the, the day the, the crayons quit. quit. By Drew Daywalt and Oliver Jeffers. Hey, I'm Ryan Lagod. And I'm Craig Tovey. And welcome to Storytime with Ryan Lagod. And Craig Tovey. Remember, if you like what you see, follow us on Instagram. Or go to our website, RyanandCraig.com. No! Yes! Because today's book is... <gasps> the, the Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors! By Drew Daywalt. Illustrated by Adam Rex. Rexy.
Let's get started. Which one do we read? The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors. By Drew Daywalt, illustrated by Adam Rex. Rexy. One, two, three, go. Long ago, in an ancient and distant realm called the Kingdom of Backyard, there lived a warrior named Rock. Rock was the strongest in all the land, but he was sad because no one could give him a worthy challenge. Rock traveled to the mysterious forest of Over by the Tire Swing, where he met a warrior who hung on a rope holding a giant's underwear. Drop that underwear and battle me, you ridiculous wooden clip man. I will pinch you and make you cry, Rock Warrior. Rock versus Clothespin. Rock is victorious. Even though he had won, Rock was still unsatisfied. So he journeyed on to the mystical tower of Grandma's favorite apricot tree. There, he was met by an odd and delicious fruit. You, sir, look like a fuzzy little butt. What? I challenge you to a duel. Then let us battle. Rock versus apricot. I will beat you, Rock, with my tart and tangy sweetness. Rock is victorious. Ugh, I'm smooshed. And yet, smooshing you has brought me no joy. Are you not entertained? They were entertained, but the battle had been too easy. So Rock left the kingdom of Backyard, still in search of a worthy foe. Whoa, Rock is amazing. Man, this guy is tough. There's no way there'll be a worthy foe for Rock. No man, Rock forever. Team Rock. Also, I like The Rock. The Rock. The Rock team forever. Meanwhile, in the empire of Mom's home office, on lonely and windswept Desk Mountain, a second great warrior sought the glory of battle, and his name was Paper. Even though he was the smartest warrior in all the land, he was also sad because no one could outwit him. He set out across Desk Mountain to find his match. There, he met a large and square monster. I gobble up the likes of you and spit them out every day, little paper. Oh, then taste my fury, giant box monster. Paper versus computer printer. No, not a paper jam. Paper, paper is, is victorious. Having beaten the fiercest fighter of Desk Mountain, Paper climbed down to the pit of office trash bin where he battled the most terrifying horde of creatures in all the land. The, the half-eaten bag of trail mix. Snack valet? Paper versus half-eaten bag of trail mix. Ah, the wizard, he's blotted out the sun. Run for your lives, ladies. Paper wins again. Can no one beat me? And so with a heavy heart, Paper departed the empire of mom's home office. Oh, whoa. whoa, paper is amazing. Paper is unstoppable. Just blocks out the sun like it's no problem. I can't imagine anybody that could beat paper. Wasn't there someone before? Ralph? Ralph? Ra I'm only thinking about paper. Team paper. Team paper. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, in the kitchen realm, in the tiny village of Junk Drawer, there lived a third great warrior. They called her Scissors, and she was the fastest blade in all the land. She too was unchallenged. On this day, her first opponent was a strange and sticky circle man. Let us do battle, you tacky and vaguely round monstrosity. I will battle you, and I will leave you beaten and confused with my adhesive and tangling powers. Scissors versus roll of tape. Scissors is victorious. Scissors forged on across the kitchen realm to the frigid wastes of refrigerator freezer. There, she met her most fearsome adversaries yet. Dinosaurs made of frozen bread and chicken. I have come from the far reaches of kitchen to battle you, oh bizarre and yummy breaded dinosaurs. Bow before our child-pleasing shapes and flavors, Swordmaster. No one can resist our crunchy awesomeness. Scissors versus dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets. Dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets win? No, no, wait! No, no they, they don't. don't! Scissors is victorious again! Am I so good that not even dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets can beat me? 
And so scissors, like rock and paper before her, traveled beyond her own kingdom, seeking out a challenger who was her equal. Whoa. Oh, man, scissors is amazing. Scissors is unstoppable. Threw in a little drama, but still victorious. I can't Whoa. imagine anybody that can beat scissors. No way, team scissors. Team scissors forever. And doesn't she sound exactly like Drew Barrymore? I mean, it's in the ballpark, I guess. Team scissors. It's so good. <laughs> team scissors. Team scissors, who sounds exactly like Drew Barrymore. <laughs> Not really. Then one day, in the great cavern of Two Car Garage, Rock and Scissors came face to face. I hope you're wearing your battle pants, Rock Warrior. If by battle pants, you mean no pants, but I'm willing to fight you, then yes, yes, I'm wearing my battle pants, weird scissory one. Rock versus Scissors! Scissors? Team Rock? Don't rock? Team scissors. scissors. Scissors? Rock? I don't know. I don't know who I want to win here. Scissors? scissors? Rock? I'm Rock. I'm Scissors. I'm Rock. An epic and legendary battle ensued, but ultimately, Rock is victorious. victorious. You have made me so happy by beating me. I wish I felt your joy, Scissors, for I've yet to meet a warrior who can beat me. Hi there. Those are fighting words. Wait, what? Rock versus paper. Ahoy. Uh, team Rock. Oh, yeah, because he won. He won last time. And paper can't beat Rock, right? Because it's crumply and... Rock. I think I'm going to go paper just in case. Remember, paper took down the printer. Uh, paper. Rock. <clears throat> this is the best day of my life. Thank you for winning, oh great knight of paper. That's fine for you. But it looks as though no one will ever beat me. Not so fast, paper. W wait, what? Scissors versus paper. Uh, paper, because paper beat rock. And rock and beat scissors, scissors, so it's paper? logical. Paper? Last well, second, scissors. No, but paper. I'm gonna stick with scissors. paper. Scissors. Scissors. Paper. Uh, I don't know. You beat me. And the three great warriors hugged each other and danced for joy, and they became fast friends. Finally, they had each met their matches. They were so happy, in fact, that they began to battle again. Round and round they went in the most massive and epic three-way battle of all time. And it is said that this joyous struggle still rages on to this very day. That is why children around the world, in backyards, on playgrounds, and yes, even in classrooms, still honor the three great warriors by playing Tic-tac-toe, dodgeball, foursquare, badminton, volleyball, chess, checkers, rock, paper, scissors. Um, yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Now that I hear it, dodgeball is a weird choice. But the question is, what team are you on now? Rock, paper, or scissors? I'm still on dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets. Uh, are, you, are you just hungry? Yeah. The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors! By Drew Daywalt, illustrated by Adam Rex. Rexy. Hey, I'm Ryan Lagod. And I'm Craig Tovey. And welcome to Storytime with Ryan Lagod. And Craig Tovey. Today's book is... <gasps> the Book with No Pictures! By BJ Novak. Let's get started! What are you doing with your mouth? <laughs> the Book with No Pictures! By BJ Novak. This is a book with no pictures. Ryan, is this really a book with no pictures? Yeah, no pictures at all. Is it fun though? Oh, it's super fun. You should keep reading. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Good luck. I'm gonna. Yeah, great. Big deal. It might seem like no fun to have someone read you a book with no pictures. It probably seems boring and serious, except here's how books work. Everything the words say, the person reading the book has to say. What? Nothing. Uh, I had a pickle. Read up, Craig. Yeah, I know how books work. Just read the words. No matter what. That's the deal. That's the rule. So that means even if the words say, Blork. Wait, what? That doesn't even mean anything. Blurf. Wait a second, what? This isn't the kind of book I wanted to read. And I have to say every word the book says? Uh-oh. Wait, Ryan, did you know about this? Uh-oh, no, no, This no. isn't fair, I didn't know. It's not me, it's the words in the book, okay? I'm just reading it. It's him. 
I am a monkey who taught myself to read. Hey, I'm not a monkey. And now I'm reading you this book with my monkey mouth in my monkey voice. That's not true. I am not a monkey. It's just what it's written down there. I'm not a monkey. Has anyone seen Craig? Because I'm just sitting next to a monkey. Hey, Mr. Monkey. Yes, I am a monkey. Also, I am a robot monkey. What? <laughs> Ryan, I'm not a robot monkey. Robot monkey. There's no such thing as a robot monkey. <laughs> and my head is made of blueberry pizza. Wait a second. Is this whole book a trick? Can I stop reading, please? No. And now it's time for me to sing you my favorite song. A song? Do I really have to sing a Glug, 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 my face is a bug. I eat ants for breakfast right off the rug. What? This book is ridiculous. Can I stop reading yet? No? There are more pages? I have to read the rest? <laughs> it's on the rug. Oh, Ryan. <sighs> yes, monkey robot. You know, you haven't read at all today. I think it's your turn. My only friend in the whole wide world is a hippo named Boo Boo Butt. Boo Boo Butt? <laughs> no, I have, I have lots of friends, not... <laughs> Craig's my friend. I gotta meet this hippo, man, that's crazy. Why have you never introduced me to Boo Boo Butt? <laughs> and also, the kid I'm reading this book to is the best kid ever in the history of the entire world. Oh, really? And this kid is the smartest kid, too, because this kid chose this book even though it had no pictures. Because kids know this is the book that makes grown-ups have to say silly things and make silly sounds like... Oh, no. Oh, no. Here it comes. Glurgawaku! Magrumfadu! Aye! Aye! Brook, 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 oomph, eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Cheez Its. Oh no! Where's Nibbles? Nibble? Chew? Nah. He's nibbled his way out of this book. Gone. Can you see him? Recipes for Nibbles and Other Culinary Delights by Emma Tartlett. Uh-oh, Nibbles has nibbled his way into someone else's story. Goldilocks and the Three Bears, Matt LaMary. No, not Goldilocks. Nibbles? Nibbles, don't nibble. That's good scolding, Craig. Nibbles, no nibbling. First, Goldilocks tried the big bowl of porridge. Yuck, too salty. Then she tried the in-betweeny size bowl of porridge. Too sweet. Then Goldilocks tried the teeny tiny bowl of porridge, and it was... Monster! Beep. When the three bears came home, they were shocked. Someone's eaten my porridge. Someone smashed my chair. Someone's broken everything. It wasn't me. It was a monster! The three bears were in for quite a surprise when they returned home and realized a curious little yellow-haired rascal has eaten their chairs and slept in their tasty porridge. We joined the naughty little hairy critter on his classic fairy tale adventure. Poor Goldilocks! Naughty Nibbles has nibbled his way into another story! Quick, let's catch him! Little Red Riding Hood! Mr. Meaty Tail! No! Not, Not Little, little Red, Red Riding, Riding Hood! Hood. Nibbles! Nibbles! Nibbles, listen, nibbles, nibbles, no nibbling. Get out of that book. Great scolding, he's definitely gonna listen to that. No, nibbles. That's great. Deep in the dark, dark forest, Little Red found Grandma's cottage. Stop that nibbler, he just nibbled my granny's lunch basket and he nibbled my cloak. Little Red knocked on the door and went inside. Grandma looked very strange. I look strange? What about Little Red? She doesn't look right at all. Oh, Little Red, what cute fluffy paws you have. What a rumbly, grumbly tummy, and what nibbly little teeth. All the better to nibble with. After a terrible hullabaloo, Grandma was set free from the cupboard. Let me in! This story is meant to be about me, my hero! Thank you, Nibbles! Oh, Nibbles. You've turned me into a chicken. I feel so fluffy. And the big bad wolf was never big or bad ever again. Little Red Riding Hood loves to visit her grandma's cottage in the dark, dark forest. One day she decides to take a picnic, but on the way she meets someone very, very hairy who wants to eat her picnic basket and red clock for lunch. But in the end, will the big bad wolf discover his fluffy side? Oh dear, Little Red is not happy. We've really got to catch Nibbles this time. He's making a real mess of things. Let's get him. Jack and the Beanstalk. Myrtle a tame. No, not, not Jack and the Beanstalk. Nibbles. 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 You might want to just enunciate just a little bit so you can hear. Nibbles. No, Nibbles. Is that good? Yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Nibbles. Jack hid just in time. The giant was home. Mr. Giant stomped through his giant door and sat on his giant chair, but something didn't feel quite right. He took a giant sniff and said, Fee, fi, fo, boom! Something just bit my body, and they're running away with my goose! Mr. Giant tried to catch the intruder and the golden goose. Come back here! I'm out of here! But they managed to escape. Fee, fi, fo, bum! I'll get you back for this, you nibbly hooligan! When Jack climbs a giant beanstalk in his back garden, he finds a giant house, a giant golden goose, and a gigantic grumpy giant. Will Jack set the poor goose free? And will he make it home for dinner? Phew, that was a close shave! Rapunzel! Hooray! The golden goose is free at last, and it looks like he's taking Nibbles back to his own story! Yay! The Golden Goose has dropped Nibbles back into his own book. Ouch! Thank you, Golden Goose. Now quick, let's close the crate before Nibbles escapes again. Phew! Well done. Now you really mustn't take your eyes off Nibbles. Not even for one second. Stop! Can you hear something? What's that noise? Nibble, chew, gnaw. 
history books. See ya! Blue chip. Time travel? Me! Visit Cousin Chomp in the city. Find Atlas. Find the tastiest book in the world. Gone nibbling. Nibbles? Oh no! Not again! No! Nibbles, Nibbles escaped the book! I mean, he could be anywhere! We'll never be able to find him! Nibbles! Nibbles! Nibbles, you get back here, Nibbles? No. I'm saying nibbles. Oh. Listen. Okay. Nibbles! It sounds like nibbles. Nibbles, you can book over you! Is that good? Yeah, no, I think he's gonna come back. Yeah. Where's that? Back in time. Yeah. Nibbles! Oh. Nibbles, nibbles the, the book, book monster. monster! By Emma Yarlett.